without going y into details, however. And I think I perfectly understand Eduardo in the sense no that some of those who are, are not locals, and even if you're eh, locals, no maybe that you cannot fully appreciate que está the pensado, a ver si effort. Bien, Eduardo, cómo and salir let me see if I'm putting it right. How to come out of the uh, quicksand we are in del varón de Muthausen. Without the Muthausen Baron method, you surely remember the Muthausen's tales, which said it is easy to set to fly, you just have to pull your shoestrings upwards and then you get on flight. However, in our theoretical speeches and lectures, we, without realizing, are replicating these tales, these anecdotes that is uh, overlooking the fact that in politics sometimes the means are more important than the ends without losing notion of the uh, ends. Eduardo's presentation, I think I have understood him correctly, uh, aims at this. I mean, how can we in a system ruling our country, which is so twisted, implement as part of our real policies uh, or how to take a path that will lead us to this idyllic ideal world we dream of where all land will be made available to all men alike and uh, so that that surplus will revert in favor of public service. I have made this personal construction, I have made this kind of footnote, so to speak, so that we can uh, fully appreciate uh, the effort that Eduardo has made in presenting this paper, and I think we should post the full paper on the website so that we can illustrate the people in government uh, who uh, have a significant gap in terms of uh, their knowledge of this issue, unfortunately. Thank you, Eduardo, again. We are now going into the performance part of this presentation. And let me explain myself. By natural law, children generally inherit parents. Is that so? Am I wrong? It should be the case. But rules, you know, have exceptions. There's always exemption to the rule. In this case, the father, myself, the one who's speaking, is inheriting the child. My secretary is my grandchild, actually. <laughs> Would you like to sit here? Well, the point is this, my dear friends. In the agenda prepared with SAP for today, my son, Ernesto Sandler, was supposed to present a book which has just published a kind of Wagnerian trilogy. He has written two books and this is the third. So it is a trilogy which replicates Wagner's trilogy. This is his last book, the latest one. So this was just a wonderful occasion to present the book himself. He's uh, been forced to travel. He's a businessman by profession. He has a bad habit of being a businessman. And like any businessman, he has his issues, his uh, challenges and opportunities. And he was planning to arrive on time, but uh, there were delays, both in terms of uh, his errands and of the flight. So I have received two pieces of news. I had to inherit him in the presentation of the book accompanied by his uh, daughter, who happens to be my grandchild, to present the book. To me, it would have been most pleasant to have him here, but I must confess, I also like doing it myself. I mean, I take pride in doing so. Especially because I have just discovered, which I didn't know, that it's dedicated to someone who is very dear to me, dedicated to my father and my master, Hector Raúl Sander. That is, to me, it's a great pleasure. I have just discovered that uh, he has dedicated the book to me. So it is both a pleasure, but it is also a responsibility which I take on. Now, let's... Uh, put a little bit of flesh to this bone. So what is it? I mean, my son writing this book, 
que se llama Called Economía this book, Sin Barreras. Economía Sin Barreras. An Economy Without Barriers. With a subtitle, straightforwardly, menos impuestos. more companies, less taxes. El título, por empezar, ya the title no is self-revealing. My daughter. My son is a, a businessman, but he's an Argentinian businessman. And this clearly shows that th this may be an analogy to a biopsy of our own society, because my son took law studies at this law school he was in fourth year, there were political crisis 1976, and he had to choose between keep on studying or going into exile. He quit law studies in Argentina, and he went into exile with me to Mexico. In Mexico, he took up courses in economics. When he started studying economics, I was afraid because I know what the official syllabuses of economics are. And as I was living in exile, I thought that my son could become my own disciple. So I invited him to read Henry George so that he could learn that he could not become a subject to contagion, and taking into account the stream of thought at the time in Mexican universities. And I was lucky enough, because my son learned this lesson. Another case I'm familiar with is the Stuart Mills case. Stuart Mills, senior Stuart Mill, junior. When we came back to Argentina, we were living in a very difficult situation. Just by way of example, when we arrived in Mexico, my wife and myself had to sleep in a room with one uh, single mattress because we didn't have anything, we didn't have any piece of furniture. I, I, I'm a carpenter, an amateur carpenter, and I made my own pieces of furniture. When I came back to Argentina in 1984, we were even worse than in Mexico. In Mexico, I had a tenure in a Mexican university, but when I came to Argentina, I couldn't do so because uh, the uh, public uh, bidding for permanent tenure had already been given. And uh, when I came back, they opened up the public bidding diplomatically, academically, a success, because I uh, earned a tenure at this law school. But of course, I had economic and financial problems. But I had to keep the pot boiling. And my wife, who is also here present, a, a wonderful teacher, an outstanding housewife, and a terrible wife. No, I'm just kidding. She's the author's mother, was able to get a provisional job. And she was working in a very precarious TV channel, working in a sort of garage, a family program. Uh, targeted to housewives, and she took charge of that TV show. Uh, the producer asked her, do you know anything about television? And she said, no, I haven't got the faintest idea. That's what I need, answered the producer. A true housewife being in charge of a family TV show. 100 pesos a month, and that was our family income. And she opened up the career for our son, who was 22 by that time, and she 
talk to the producer about her son, and my son started working for that TV show, Utilissima. And the producer noticed that this young man, age 22, was much more than a mere TV assistant, and he became the TV show director. Uh, but even though he was a director, the TV show was being uh, shot at an old garage, and the rating points were very low. So this was a sort of gift, but a, a gift which was not uh, producing financial benefits. Now, this was our starting point by the end of the 1980s. In 25 years' time, that young man, who was the owner of this pseudo company, transformed Utilissima in the main women's channel in Argentina, and later on, he was able to obtain satellite TV broadcasting emissions, and he had more than 354 employees. This is a TV show given in different languages all over the world, a wonderful business. He was, of course, uh, did not live in Argentina. He would be a Rupert Murdoch of uh, TV shows, but we are living in Argentina. And the same smart eye, his persistence, his industriousness, because he built a very small TV set at the very beginning, that eagle eye told him the time has come for you to sell your business. Because in Argentina, if you have a successful Porque private si no company and you are the owner of such company, you should sell it. Because if you are non monopolistic on the one hand, or you do not have uh, the aid and help of the federal state, you're going to have problems. I am a lawyer specialized in bankruptcy, and I know this. So he persuaded Mr. Moore from Fox International to purchase, to purchase Utilissima. And then he started a new job. He started telling Argentinians how he had made it a successful businessman. He was smart enough to say, well, this is the top of my career in this field. And that's why he sold his business. He tells anyone interested in knowing how he made it, who he made contact with at the very beginning to start walking along this path. That is his first book. His second book deals with the TV show business. And the third one, and I hope that maybe this is the last one book. The third one titled uh, An Economy Without Barriers, More Companies, Less Taxes. It's a wonderful book. I did the proofreading, originally speaking, uh, in the case of the first and second book. In the third book, I didn't do proofreading. But before coming to this conference, I noticed that my son is an entrepreneur in addition to being a private businessman. He was able and qualified enough to produce high-quality, top-notch TV shows. He's an organized man, an industrious fellow. He knows what he wants. He is not deluded by unreal proposals and Therefore, he is a success case story. And if 